That's that, last four bags. We're shooting for 26.7. So if you've not figured out what tractor we've bought by now, we have bought. Got a wee party of cows following me this morning. Morning, Holly. What a beat. Big breakdown. It's the drill working there. Good morning, how many of you figured out what tractor we've bought? Anyway, I'm going to see Percy and cows to feed, Highlanders to feed. A few other bits to do today and we'll see what's happening this afternoon as well. And you'll see the tractor like that. Morning boy. Rob. Go see your pal. Where's your pal? Watch enough of there. That's more of the case enough. So it turns out I had two grub screws, but not only on this one, on this two of them. So we battered the casing apart, it's off, and now we've got the shaft. There's nothing to, to grip onto. I'm trying to punch it from the old uh, club school hole. I'm trying that, and I bet he's feeling that again just from that. It seems open up a wee bit. It's well on. It's off. Bit of a brute. Right, we're down to just a shaft, so. One, I can get a new bearing sorted out. The collar's down there, it's still really hot. Then there's the outside of the bearing that we battered to pieces to get off, because we've already snapped a corner bolt mount off anyway. So, so I'll take those two in, I'll be able to get a new one sorted out. And then brushes, I've got a few of them off, so I can get the, the diameter of those and get some ordered. There's 49, 25 plastics and 24 of the wire. You do them kind of wired and plastic, wired and plastic. Anyway, peace time. Back on the, the wheel electric machine. Just getting the racks up. Kev's done quite a lot of these racks. Got a lot done. We've got a lot of space now. A bit more space anyway. A few more shelves to do. Andrew Black Lorry with a load of seed for us. It's our own stuff that went away. Got treated. It's coming back. Here he comes. We'll just get him reversed down into the shed door. Put all the seed in here. There's just only six and a half ton, I think. Where am I going to put it? And it's not going to be in the way. Hmm. Getting the big door open, but I'm just figuring out where I'm going to put this. I'll right, shift the pusher and I'll get it in that wee bit there. Getting this big muckle pusher out of the, the road. There we go. This can just... What was this pushing last? Bolt. Let me find that. Just for any residual. Oh, it's still kicking about in little grooves or notches or anything. I'll be fine next to the week. First four, there we go. Laureate, 54 grams per thousand grains. That's that, last four bags. Only 13 bags, six and a half ton. It will go into yard number three, eventually. Just take it off here, we'll get it on a flatbed if we need to shift it, but we've got nice dry spaces to, to store it here. Lorry driver's phone's knackered and between all the lorries they've got they can call between the lorries on a separate system so I had to phone his mate and he's got another two drops to do and he has to get other people to direct him he's stuffed without a phone anyway that's that six and a half ton of laureate seed the spring barley just had their their brunch deed battery drill bits we got a pilot sorted out Tech screwed these boards so they can't shift about or get nudged by other pallets. We're just about done. So I drilled a pilot first because I kept snapping the heads on them. Get this roller door up because we're bringing in the wee pallet forks. 
the manual pallet forks because we need to shift this box, which is a chiller unit. Sling this round into that gap. Should be just perfect. Box of logs to swap out. You'll have noticed I've got a different welder shot on today. Box of logs to swap out because this one's empty for the farm shop, so we'll get another one in there. Just trying to sort out this creep feeder. So I originally ordered a new one, and then a friend saw that I already ordered a new one, and he's got one that's one year old for sale, or he's just putting it up for sale. I'm trying to get a hold of that one because it's a wee bit cheaper. One of those. Just sneak this in here, will I? That'll do. Landed it on a pallet. We've now got piles of stuff, like the bottles, and there's loads of stuff out the back there to come into this store now and get on the rack. So, shift this van out the road. Just off the phone there with a lorry driver, he's on his way to pick up a load of wheat, so that'll be in about an hour and a half. Getting on really well with that wee machine. Just so handy being able to get in about there because it's possible with this muckle thing or you end up hitting things and breaking things. So I'm just bringing things over, passing them to Kev, and then he's stacking them on the shelves. So this will be one of the heaviest pallet loads we receive an order. Um, it's a pallet of ginger beer. There's about 1,800 bottles on this pallet load. So 300, and, I think that's 330 mil. So 0.33 kilo times 1,800. So that's 540 kilo. So we don't need the capacity of 2.5 ton of that machine that that machine has. The last of the sprouts are kind of showing their age now, so no point trying to sell them. We'll just break them onto the cows, they'll munch them. Fished out a lot more piles of stuff to move. There's a lot of cardboard boxes for their branded uh, boxes. We do hampers in those. We're going to have to raise some of these because as you can see, there's some pallets that are quite tall. You need four beams really on a shelf to make it sturdy. If you just do like two beams at the top or two beams in the middle, it'll go all carry wompus and fall over. So we're going to put up two more racks. We've got the bars to do that. We'll put a very bottom shelf in and then a very top shelf, and that will give us a white bay uh, in the middle for tall items. And then we've still got a shelf on the top for smaller, lighter pallets. Right, that's eight bars sorted out. We'll get them across and get another rack up. So get this one up, put a bottom level on it there, and then this is just to hold it right now, and then put two on the top of the shelf. Take that one out, and then you've got a full bay all the way up to there, which tall pallets like that one can get into. You'll have guessed it by now, you'll have seen the boiler shoot. Fent. That's what we've gone for. So I'll tell you why we went for Fent, what the actual model tried to go for, and the bits that are on it. Later on, once we've got a bit of time, it'll definitely be in this video though, don't worry, just wait a couple of minutes. Just gonna load this lorry first and I've got a few other things to get done. I've strung it along a fair bit with this new tractor. Strung it out a bit, but we we're kind of every three years maybe buying a tractor, so gonna have to wait three more years till I can string it out again, so I made the most of it. Anyway, here we go, C-Club lorry. Typical, we get a wheat lorry literally hours before I shifted that. But the forks are full of stuff, so I'm just going to have to take out here and deal with that little corner later. We're shooting for 26.7. Need to calibrate his, his scales. Pretty much bang on, two ton in a bucket. Saying that, 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 that needs calibrated, but anyway. Let's see what it goes up to. the middle and we're done. Done. 26, 7. The majority of them only calibrated. None of them are bang on. They just know how much is out by and say make it that instead. There we go. Load of wheat. That was meant to be in on Sunday apparently. Whenever they phone early to say they're coming in a week and a half's time on the tents, they never arrive on that time. You can only you only know they're coming if they phone half an hour before saying I'm half an hour away. Anyway, left that door open, Kev's going to get the trailer out of there because there's malt barley to shift from yard number three along to here, just six tonne. So he's going to grab that in the morning, so he's going to grab a trailer out of there. 
Kev must have been dragged to another job. He's got a board ready for in here. I'll just chuck it on. Actually, I know where he's gone to cut stays for in here and up there. Like that wee bar in there. You see it? Just to support the board. As you can see, chop the ends off of those. Right and back. Kev's away. Long gone. Seen a man about a dog. Right and back. And I've seen a man about a dog. Anyway, Kev's been in here finishing up, filling up these racks. Uh, still, I've still got a board to put up there. But he's got that rack in. Um, he's got those ones filled up with tall pallets. He's managed to jam a pallet up there as well. Perfect stuff, everything in. We thought this was going well. Uh, I think tomorrow um, they'll be taking this away and dropping us off a 1.6. That's a 2.5. 2.5 ton. Uh, we'll get 1.6 tomorrow with a um, triple wheel rather than a four wheel. I'd say it's a fraction too big for in this space, which is where it'll be used most often. Um, I mean, it's myself and Kev are all right on it, but we put people in the shop through a forklift course if um, just so they can do forklift stuff when we're not about. They've obviously spent a vast majority less time than we have on a forklift, so inherently they'll not be as good in, in theory. I mean, I've, yeah, it's questionable. But it's just nicer having a smaller forklift and a bit more space to manoeuvre about and get things here, there and everywhere when you need to. So see how we get on with the small one. Here's a tour. So Trigo 80, 25. So 2.5 tonne and it lifts to 4.7 metres, I think. 4 point, 4 point, where it'll say on here. There you go. There's the specs for anyone wanting to know. The weight of it, the lift height, what, what weight it can lift to what height. There you go. Forward, neutral, reverse. Accelerator down here, brake, lift the mast, drop, drop the mast, tilt back, tilt forward, and then your side shift. Pretty simple. Uh, handbrake here, it's a bit dodgy. It, it's not dodgy, but you just need to know how to use it. Steering wheel, lights, cup holder for your coffee. Most of these buttons don't actually do anything. Nothing. Completely open cab, no windows, no nothing, so you get soaked if you're outside. But you can see a lot, you can see really well at the top. Much better than the JCB. Battery pack under here. So eight hours, apparently this will do, of charge. Hold on, it's in neutral. What have I not done? Oh, handbrake, didn't put the handbrake on. I think this is the lead you have to fill up with distilled water. Every eight charges. Four wheels. Two big forks, a mast, it's orange. That's it, there's not much to, to say. Weight's probably not an issue with these machines, they don't need any like big weights on them, on the back or anything, because the batteries will be so heavy. Although there is a big hunk of steel in the back there, the fair weight in that. All in all, pretty handy machine. I think will be better with a slightly smaller one though. Last job of the day, I need to get these Cows fed up with ammonia straw. There goes the dog chasing a rabbit. You'll not see. Maybe a hare. No, oh, there's the hare. Wait to the dog. There's the dog. Did you see it? That'll be the dog long gone chasing that hare. Never catch it, but oh, no, she's appeared back. Things like that could do with the grab just squeezing slightly, slightly more. Okay, we've ordered a tractor. One of these things. Wow, that's a bad looking tractor. A fent. Looks like it goes the other way. I'll put a trailer on the back, that'll help. That's what we've ordered. One fent, a 718, 180 horsepower. So that's that. One fent ordered. Reason why we ordered a fent. We're pretty confident uh, in the long one run will be more reliable um, than we were at the moment. The price difference between the two, hopefully we should get back again later down the line when we sell. The resale value should be a bit more. So long term, it hopefully it'll be a better decision. That's the conclusion we came to. It only, it'll only be a time will tell situation in 10 years time when we look back, when we sell it. I'll come back to this video and uh, quote what I've said, whether it'll be uh, worthwhile doing that or not. We think it will, time will tell. Looking forward to it arriving. Hopefully it'll be here by May. They're saying May, so I'm pretty confident. They're pretty confident as well. It's coming in May, so hopefully it comes in May. Otherwise, it'll be a bit annoying. But May is the delivery date for the Fent 718 Vario.
I strung it out quite a lot because we don't buy a tractor that often. I mean, let's say like every three years. So that'll be the last of the new tractor and you don't actually know what it is yet. So actually know when it arrives, you'll get a new tractor video. Other than that, let me know down below if you think that was a good decision or whether you would have gone John Deere or New Holland or whatever. Anyway, time will tell how we get on. Hopefully it'll be coming soon. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, like and subscribe in those two corners and we'll see you in tomorrow's video, which will be Monday. Also, the two clues that were in the, the last video, one was a boiler shirt I was wearing. I've not got it on at the moment, but it was a Fent boiler shirt. You only really see the colour and a bit of a sleeve. The other clue was the potatoes in the bucket. There was seven, there was one, and there was eight. Quite a few, actually not that many. I'd say like 15 people in total got it, or that commented anyway. Cheers for watching. Good night. Do you see the road?